that was your first deal and uh, profitable, not what we usually do, but profitable. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> and you learn stuff. No, okay, well, no, it was good. It was good. I'm glad. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the MobileHomeInvesting.net. We're doing a case study right now, a little different than normal because uh, this is one where I've never seen Daniel uh, face to face. So we're going to do this case study. And uh, who knows what to expect here, <laughs> Daniel. Hey, John. Hey, <laughs> I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. This is cool. It is good. I uh, I was just explaining that we have never like seen each other face to face. I see your little Facebook like picture. <laughs> that, you know? Yeah, yeah, I've seen you plenty of times. So, but was, yeah, right. Well, besides, I guess yeah. But for me, it's like ah, this is cool. You know, like, first time seeing you, so. Right. Um, this is cool. So we'll push past all the uh, weirdness and, 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 and awkwardness, <laughs> okay. if there's any. And just, yeah, let's, I mean, we've, we've talked so many times on the phone. Um, how long have we been working together? Or how long have you been mobile home investing now? Man, so I think we started in October of 2015 or oh. November, somewhere right around in there. Okay. So not, not too much. Not um, too much? No. And please tell what, uh, tell, uh, thank you, first of all, A, first of all, for being here for opening up your business and just kind of sharing what you're going to share. Please tell everyone kind of where you got started mobile home investing and where you are now. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah, so actually my first mobile home deal that I did was, you know, before I met you and it was back in Wyoming. It was like right out of high school. I bought a piece of land that had a mobile home on it and um, there was an older couple in there that they owned the home and then I went ahead and um, just kept getting passive income from that. I guess I didn't realize the potential until down, you know, until I graduated college. And so I ended up being like, man, this is really cool. And I was like, I need to learn some more stuff about this. So I was like, I found out, you know, John, you're, you're the guy to go to. So um, I thought mobile home parks was kind of going to be my thing. Um, and maybe still, still be so. Um, but I saw that the, it might be valuable to go ahead and jump into just doing individual mobile homes just because it got a, has a lower like you know dollar amount entry fee um and then also i have a chance to see what good parks were like bad parks or you know bad parks and you know meet park managers and everything like that um so after that so after that i ended up finding out that um it wasn't until about march i did my first deal um so it, you know it kind of took me a while but i really wanted to kind of educate myself on the whole process of you know, the buying, the selling. I, I wanted to try to minimize all my, you know, the pitfalls that I might run into. Um, so it took it took a little while, but um, once I started doing one deal, like they just kind of kept rolling in. Uh, the park managers, they, you know, started to, you know, have a little more trust factor there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, so it took about, what, say four, four or five months inside until I did my first deal. But I think that was just more so me personally. So let's talk about that. Now, going back, you're, you started, well, you're, you're from Wyoming? Yep. Area? Okay. From Wyoming. And right out of high school, I mean, who does that? Who buys a mobile home on a, on a piece of land? That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's kind of awesome, right? Is that how yeah. it worked out? You just got this bug in you and you wanted to do it? Or was it a family thing? Or Yeah, well, it was actually kind of a funny thing because um, the people that owned the land, they were going bankrupt. And that there's this older couple on there. And I was just like, well, you know, I don't want to have to, you know, those guys to move. And it looks like a neat kind of thing. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know what real estate investing was at the time, really, you know. So I was just like, hey, they're getting $150 a month of income. Um, you know, that can probably be increased, you know, and so that's, that's kind of how that started there. When you bought that home from that, so you bought it, it was a foreclosure or bank? No, no, they actually owned the home. It was just a piece of property that I bought and oh. they just, so, so it's, they just, they just rent the land out and that's, what's really cool. Cause I never had to do any, any re fixing up or anything. I never did anything. And so I was going to push yeah. the paperwork. That's fantastic. Um, what has that? Is that one still cash flowing well? The, those people aren't oh, an issue. Oh boy! Wow! Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what's cool too is what I really, you know, when I looked in your program, I thought it'd be neat to go ahead and, you know, do your technique once, you know, because they're older, you know, they'll they'll move on eventually to go ahead and you know buy and then resell yeah. uh, the home just because I don't probably want to rent it out either. So, what were the numbers on the on that land, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so I paid sixteen five for it. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, right now it's doing 225 monthly. It should be more around 400, um, but I just you know, 
probably let my heart get in the way a little bit. <laughs> Definitely. People, so. Could you, well, that's all right. Yeah. Could you um, uh, put more homes on the land? Can you subdivide no. that land? Is it? No, if it's really small, it's only a quarter of an acre. So. Okay. Okay. Really. Any financing that you got on the land when you bought it or just pay cash? Yeah. No, I got some financing uh, for it. Which was, you know, which was kind of funny that they actually gave it to me because I was right out of high school. I didn't really have much of a job. Yeah. And um, so, but it's all paid off now. Like a local bank, local credit union kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, just a local bank. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. For a small piece of local land, that's the smart. Right, um, right. So, right on. I mean, that's, yeah, just right out of high school. Hats off. That That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then you, so, and then, but th those, the deals that you got for your mobile homes in your parks, those were not in Wyoming. So yeah. they were in uh, Delaware. First okay. one's in Delaware, and then the other one are in, are in Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, because where we lived uh, is in, in Delaware. It was right on the border of Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey. The, you know, so. right, all viable spots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was hard to you know throw a rock and not get in another state. <laughs> yeah. No, you brought up a really good or an interesting point. Um, I mean, you kind of alluded where you know once you started doing deals, the deals came in. But what was it? those four months, those three months, you know, before you got started or before you actually pulled the trigger on a deal. Um, yeah, to kind of jog my memory, the yeah. people that are listening, was it, you know, you took zero action getting started or no, you took every action in the world and nothing was sticking or you didn't make offers until three months or like it was, you're overcoming your inner, you know, yeah, what, yeah. what, what so was think, it there? I think the biggest thing for me was, trying to learn every step of it. I didn't do it like kind of, I didn't do like the step-by-step -step with your, with your program. I tried to go through the whole thing first. Sure. Try to learn, learn it, you know, the inside out, you know, so if anything came up, um, I would kind of have the right answer for it. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I, so I think you could go, you could go both ways with it. Um, so that's, that's what kind of took me a while longer to, you know, wrap my head around. Mm -hmm. um, but then the other thing was a lot of the parks that were really close to me that I thought I was going to be, you know, doing most of the business in, was owned by just one big corporation, mm -hmm. um, and they were kind of had a reputation for being kind of bullies and money hungry and um, hard to deal with. So, and they also had really high lot rent. So it was like seven hundred dollars a month lot rent. So I was really hesitant to go ahead and you know get a home and have to start paying seven hundred dollars a month, you know, because they weren't giving me any free lot rent for the first few months, and so that would have been challenging financially for me. They 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 were willing to work with uh, like with me. Um, they just definitely had their own, uh, you know, priorities and they wanted their own thing. Like they, they knew how they wanted it to be done. So they wanted us to put a lien on the, with, um, so we couldn't use a oh, trust, okay. you know, stuff like that. And, you know, they weren't going to, you know, give us any leeway as far as, you know, free, you know, rent and just the property manager was kind of, you know, difficult. I feel like I could sense a little, you know, um, you know, maybe them not letting in anybody into the park. Just a gut feeling. Yeah, yeah. Th that's, so. I mean, it, to, to realize that prior to getting into the home is so, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps now because there's a, <laughs> been a few times when I've been in a park and I'm like, oh crap, like I, I didn't do my due diligence for this park manager. Their application yeah. process is ridiculous and through the roof. They just are like bipolar and I caught them right. first on a good day and then now they're not on a good day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But that's also, you caught that before and then you did go a little bit further. So, and you mentioned as well, kind of looping back to that point of like, you want to know all the answers prior to getting started. That's a real tendency. I see that. And I remember that in my own career when I was first getting started, like, where do you draw the line between, okay, I can keep learning and keep adding like more knowledge and bullets to my belt so I can help yeah. more people. Like, when do I stop learning and start calling people? Because right. I can always learn more and I should learn more to help more people. But it's like, you got to. Yeah, what was that point for you then that was like, you know what, like I, you were obviously, you know, probably scared or you had some anxiety <laughs> or apprehensions like you're calling your, you know, first or, you know, the list of mobile home sellers. Like what was going through your mind then? Did you feel prepared? Waiting? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the kind of the first step is calling like the park, all the parks and kind of asking them questions. Right. So that was kind of like like maybe a little bit of a challenge just kind of like just you know, it's just because it's the first thing. It's just a small thing, too. Right. But, right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It happens. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, but no, they, um, I think, I think the biggest, like when I was kind of like, ah, oh, man, this definitely works is when I was starting to see like, you know, on, like on bigger pockets as well, seeing people posting, you know, how good the returns are or just going to like the real estate groups, 
um, and talking to like no investors and just, you know, they would say how great like mobile homes have been some of the best uh, avenues for their notes, actually. Wow. So that was encouraging. Um, and then also just go ahead and putting out those ads and on the Craigslist and just seeing like the amount of people coming in. Um, but, you know, now later on getting down that road a little bit, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how many of those people uh, really weren't qualified to be owners of homes as well. Correct. So, yeah, yeah, that's so, you know, for the folks listening, um, people that want to uh, rent your homes, that want to own or finance your homes, um, th there are a lot of people that have, have just have not lived in a home for longer than a few years, don't have adequate income, don't have the ability to repay, have evictions, just are not people that you want to get into a long-term five, six, 10 year relationship with. Um, not that they're not good or bad people or you wouldn't want to have a beer or play volleyball with them, but just to get into a relationship is there's a lot of 95 plus percent of people are, uh, yeah, you would not want to do, but you know, you, you just want to set yourself up for success, set your tenants up for success. Speaking that of, of that so far, you know, granted it's only been a few months now that you've been receiving payments on these homes. Are all of your tenant buyers paying well? Are they happy? Any issues yep, there? Yep. Yep. No, everybody's paying really, you know, it's just super smooth. And, you know, like we talked about before too, like I do, I use the cozy, uh, yes. to go ahead and, you know, accept the payments and, you know, so far everybody's really liked it. Um, you know, as far as setting up just like the ACH automatic payments, it's kind of, it kind of takes a little bit off, you know, you know, a little stress off of me because I know it's just automatically going over even if they forget, you know, so, <laughs> and yeah, it, it works great. It works great. Now, what are you using the, so it's cozy dot, dot co. Yep. And then are you using their app, uh, their screening service as well? Yeah, I'll, yep, I'll use that as well. I mean, okay. that's which is which really makes it easy because it just goes ahead and puts it on the you know the people that are interested in buying. It's like twenty five for a credit report and twenty five for a background. So awesome. Okay, good. So folks listening, that's a very good site, Cozy Co. Check that out. We'll have a link somewhere. Um, the let's go into the the meat of these deals. You know, you know how many uh, how many deals are we talking about in your portfolio? So at this point, um, with your program, I, I've done actually, I've done four, um, but they've all kind of been a different, different variety of, of deals for sure. So um, the first one that I did actually was, was in one of those uh, big company parks that I, and I was hesitant to get in, um, mm -hmm. but I had a, you know, I had a friend, you know, that was an investor as well, and she was, wanted to take the avenue of uh, mobile home parks and try it out as well. Um, so... I, since I didn't want to get in there right away, I didn't really want to have to, you know, worry about maybe the high lot rent or anything, um, you know, getting myself into a situation. Uh, she, she didn't mind that and she wanted to jump on it. So I just kind of gave it to her with a referral fee. Um, and I got to learn a lot as far as, you know, mistakes she made and things she did right. Uh, so that was, that was nice. That was the, so that was the first deal. So your first deal was a complete, like, Bird dog fee. I mean, you it got was a bird dog fee. You yeah. found it. it yeah. Now, okay. Now let's. Now, who is this woman? And did she? I mean, she was brand new as well. Yeah. Right. And you just met her from how? How'd you meet her? Yeah, just the real estate investing group actually. And she she liked mobile homes because she lived in a mobile home, and you know she was doing uh, another mentoring program, the Rich Dad Poor Dad program. Okay. Which you know, if you're gonna do mobile homes, better go with you, man. <laughs> I've heard so. some things, but now with that said, um, the thank you by the way, the um, this this woman, what sort of lessons did you learn? I mean, from her because you were following along. Yeah, what yeah. kind of things did she do? I mean, in, 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 in hindsight now, because you have, yeah, the more of experience. Yeah, so the thing that, it's the big thing that I think she did was she waited too long to do the rehab, and she wanted everything to be just perfect for her buyers as far as, you know, the painting, the counters. You know, she really kind of went overboard, you know, and yeah, but may, mainly just waiting super long to do the rehab and not having a handyman go in and do the work, you know, and having... Uh, you know, family member do it, but that didn't really have the time. So, and so she, and she didn't market it for a couple, couple months, you know, Wow, so, to resell, yeah, to resell because it wasn't, you know, just, it took, it took about three months to get the rehab done for what, her. So when did you, um, cause you got started in November ish time. Yeah. When was this one? Uh, so this would have been, um, probably January or February. Okay. So, I mean, by that time, like November is a little slow. December can be a little slow. Still people buying and selling, but they don't, you know, if you don't have to, you don't really want to. Right. Um, 
so but to, you know february's decent so okay so you did that's crazy that you would i mean every single day for the folks listening um you're you're paying holding cost yeah i mean you're you're and the time of the year is changing but you're you're oh. paying lot lot rent so basically she had a couple months before she started the rehab it took some months for the rehab yeah. and then she waited to did she resell it for cash or is she still she actually so she's she's selling on payments as well and she okay. She was so like kind of desperate to go ahead and get it sold. Wow. Uh, she took a really low down um, down payment, um, but yeah, it's just it's just things you know you got to learn from you know kind of that first experience, you know. Right, but then to, yeah, and to see that happen and to just see the yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's she didn't go into the deal like I want to lose money on this, you know, or I want to cause myself a bunch of stress, but you just yeah, wow. So hopefully she took those lessons and hope maybe she's still doing it or maybe not. Or maybe now yeah. that you've moved to Wyoming, um, you uh, maybe can partner with her on deals or. Well, that's what I thought as well. Um, but she ended up moving the same time I did out back to, you know, back south. So. That's right. I was talking about that. Is it. Uh, ooh, OK, I was. Well, I was just wondering about her. Like, how's that person that she put in there? Because putting in the wrong person is like a is an easy thing to make a mistake on as well. You know, just ah. a, a high risk, scary person. Yeah. Um, I think she feels really good about her buyers. So good. Okay. So she, she'll make her money back and, you know, she'll make some profit on it. Um, cool. You know, it's, it's, you know, definitely she, she took out a HELOC for it oh, wow. uh, for the home. So, I mean, uh, it's probably making, it's going to make more money than it would just sitting there. Yeah. Wow. Still but, though, I mean, you, you found the deal. Did you negotiate it? as well yeah 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 I did, yeah i did i did all that side of it so so that's awesome i mean you do did a lot of that work you had that experience and then yeah you bird dogged it kind of well i'm not sure the fee you got more of a maybe a wholesale without the official paperwork at that point but anyway that was your first deal and uh profitable not what we usually do but profitable <laughs> no, and no, you learn stuff no, okay, well, <laughs> no it was good it was good i'm glad i'm glad i did it okay uh, the second, second deal that i did though was <laughs> The one that I did with you, which was which has been you know the most profitable since, um, you know out of all four of them, um, what we did is we you know we, we was a double wide. It was in a great park with a great park manager. Um, you know they allowed dogs, uh, which was a which is a huge factor. Um, actually, I've come to find out. Uh, and then you know so they she we ended up paying her all cash five thousand. Um, we got twenty five hundred dollars on the down, and you know and then we got eighty three months of. 410 and so it's about a 400 roi which is pretty decent right which is very decent so let's go over those numbers again so and was that the one there was a bank a bank yeah we had to pay that off yep. so what did she walk away with uh so yeah she only walked she walked away with maybe 1500 dollars, and that was just enough to put down her um her fee to get into her new apartment that she was moving into which is crazy because she was you know the you know the seller she would has been painted it off for you know about 10 years and she was that close to paying it off and you know then she just wants to sell it you know they really go ahead oh i'm sorry to cut you off um well you you might have actually been going this way i mean why does someone you know for for people listening i mean that just doesn't make you know it doesn't make logical sense and this woman was you know rational it was a go you mind if we put pictures of the home uh, on yeah. this video i mean it was it's a gorgeous home it's a double wide like you said the inside the outside gorgeous um, why, what was her motivation or, you know, you know her better, what was going on in her life or the <laughs> fact that she just like, didn't want to sell for 10,000 or 15,000 or, or maybe she did, she just couldn't or yeah, what no, was I, that like? I think, I think she could, I, if, you know, if she actually tried to market it, I think she was kind of a quiet person. She was a sing, you know, single mother. Um, she wanted, I think she just wanted to, you know, walk away with no one knowing that she was even trying to sell her home. Um, and she didn't want to do any more repairs. She was kind of, you know, she was kind of like, oh, this is disgusting or this is disgusting. Um, you know, just like little small things too, right? And so she, she just didn't want to have to do any of the repairs. She just wanted to walk away, start a new life in a new apartment. Um, you know, just, just kind of, just kind of an easy button, right? So that, that's, that's what it is for most, most people. Wow. Great way to just put that. I mean, I didn't, the fact that, yeah, she just kind of wanted to slip out without people knowing and not wanting to negotiate and not wanting to do the repairs that she thought were, you know, big in her mind that really weren't. Let's talk about the numbers here in the procedure, because this one was a cool lesson because there was an existing loan lien on the home that was about $3,500. 
Yeah. Uh, I want to quickly interrupt this video because as I'm editing this video for you, um, it's not exactly as clear as I would like how this deal was done. Uh, and this deal you will see if you're an investor in a mobile home community uh, and you're purchasing a mobile home, there's a chance that there may be a small debt, a small lien on the home, maybe five, six thousand dollars or less that you can go ahead and pay off uh, and then clean the home and then resell it. Now I have another example if you want to click here for a different video of when we went ahead and wholesaled a property or just kind of fast turned it wasn't a wholesale but just a fast turn of a property um, from we sold it for all cash but there was a bank loan on it uh, for much higher than uh, this one right behind me so but in this deal that we're doing with Daniel there's a few different people there's uh, Daniel or the uh, investor there's the seller and there is a bank and a lot of homes that you find in a park, they don't have liens on them, mobile homes. So some of the newer ones, of course, do, but a lot of the older ones, because they're tough to get refinanced, they don't have liens on them. They're free and clear. But this one has a this one has a thirty five hundred dollar payoff, and the seller doesn't have that. She's been paying on this for years and years, but she does not have the thirty five hundred dollar cash to pay it off. We went ahead and paid. $5,000 for this home. Of that $5,000, $3,500 went ahead to pay that off from us. Now, we did have an agreement, uh, a purchase and sale agreement, and also another agreement uh, stating that we were going to go ahead and pay off this, this uh, debt. And then afterwards, she was going to go ahead and sign the title over to us because the bank is the lien holder. They're the one holding the title. So they're holding the title. I gave specific instructions. Please don't, uh, after this uh, debt is paid off, don't send the title to the seller. Send it to Daniel, please. And I gave specific instructions for the bank to go ahead and do that. Please do that whenever you're doing this. Sometimes you want to use an attorney. You want to use a third party uh, to be the middle person between the seller and you. And the title can come to them. But I would rather the title come to Daniel or come to an attorney or some third party, but not the seller. Because if the title comes to the seller, it's free and clear. The title, if she was unscrupulous, she could go ahead and just sell that to somebody else for, you know, all the money that you know the home could could sell for so uh, granted we did have this notarized agreement um, but you know usually we would use a closing attorney we did not opt to use a closing attorney or a, a real estate attorney excuse me a real estate attorney in this case um, and when the title did come to Dan it's interesting because they said it would take 30 days to be in the mail it got to the mail uh, in a week and it was just waiting at the post office for like three weeks. Me and Daniel just kept saying like, where is this? We haven't heard from the bank. We haven't heard from, you know, we don't know where this title is. It's like missing in transit. So uh, 30 days later, we did get the title. The seller was paying law rent in the meantime. And uh, we did fix the home. We were putting in, uh, we put in $2,500 for a small leak in the roof and then some carpet issues. Um, and then the seller had to, uh, once we did have the title, the seller had to sign off. So the seller gave us her signature in exchange for the $1,500. That was the difference between the $3,500 payoff and the, the $5,000 uh, purchase price for the home. So she walked away with $1,500. Uh, we got the title, signed title. We got the keys. Uh, and we sold the home after putting in some work, after marketing the home, uh, sold it for $2,500 uh, to go ahead and move in. And then that's at 83 months for uh, $410 a month, which is over uh, $35,000 as a sale price when we sold the home. So I just wanted to break that down to show you exactly what we did and then talk about, you know, the fact with the agreement versus the attorney and then how all those pieces kind of moved around. So let's now go back to the video. I mean, go. that's how I mean, <laughs> I, my fourth deal came about as well. So let, so the uh, say again about the, the resale on this first one or on the second one on this first. Uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we, we paid the 5,000 for it, you know, just about got 2,500 down. Um, and then doing 83 months of payments of 410. Perfect. So it comes, okay. yeah, it's a good, comes to a pretty good number. What year is that home as well? It's a 90. Yeah. Okay. looks newer. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it, it does. Um, yeah, I maybe, you know, maybe if, you know, the buyers in there and like could pay it off sooner, you know, maybe give them a discount as well. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. yeah. 
wouldn't be opposed to that, right? Okay. So the, that was the first. Well, no, that was your. That was like your. Well, that was your third official deal, kind of with that first yeah, land sec- one. Yeah, second, second one. Second, okay. Second oh one. well, that's right. And the bird dog, and then the, okay. <laughs> the um. So that was uh number two. The third. The third one. Oh man, this third one was the worst. This is a nightmare, man. This is the. This has had to be the worst. Uh, yeah. Experience. I mean, great the, learning experience. I was going to say that, okay. <laughs> and it's still going to be, pro- well, we'll get to that. But yeah, t- yeah, go so, through. So yes. um, so this, I partnered with another someone else from, from the real estate club um, on this deal. Um, just because he was interested in getting into mobile homes. And it's nice to have someone to talk to about it, you know, and, you know, and do this stuff with. And, you know, they bring in so much, uh, you know, other, you know, thoughts and stuff that I, I don't know um, as far as real estate goes. So what happened, um, we, got the, we got the house or the mobile home for $1,500. Um, you know, we got three free months of lot rent in this park. Uh, the one downfall to, you know, it's a good park, good park managers. The one downfall was that they don't allow dogs. Um, so that, you know, that's something to you know, be cautious of, you know, moving forward as well. Um, but the thing with this home was the roof had a bow in it. So we had to, you know, just kind of do some replacement on the roof. You know, I, so I ended up, you know, contacting a lot of contractors and, you know, handymen and I just got, you know, different, different uh, quotes across the board. But um, I ended up going with, with some, you know, with someone that, you know, maybe kind of, maybe kind of fooled me into thinking that he was more experienced and um, wasn't, wasn't quite experienced at all, actually. And he ended up, it ended up being about double our anticipated, you know, uh, repair cost. That's so. huge. Yeah, it is huge. So, I mean, we were, we were in it pretty, you know, we had, to, we had, we, I kind of felt like we had to make certain repairs in order to, you know, sell it, but we did sell it for all cash eventually. Um, and we just came out about even, we were able to, you know, just kind of wipe our hands of the deal um, and just kind of take the, the, the knowledge, you know, moving forward as far as working with handymen, you know, buying houses at what prices, getting free lot rent, you know, you know, what kind of parks you're working in. So this was a three bedroom or two bedroom. Just, it was a two bedroom actually. Okay. So, but a good looking home as well. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, it was good looking on the outside. The the one thing too was, uh, the, the person that prior to living there was a huge smoker, just, just terrible. Um, and so it was that little smell still kind of stayed in there. We did put like, we did like a, uh, you know, kills it Mm -hmm. and we replaced the carpet and repainted it. Um, but still, Wow. It, it still it still stayed in there. I mean, it was it was, yeah, it, was, it had like nicotine on the you know on Ugh. the walls. It was just, it was pretty it was bad. <laughs> How much were you into that home? If you don't mind me asking, eighty five hundred. Park. So eighty five. Okay. And then was it when you have a partner? And this is just for folks listening. You know, when you have a partner, you have to split things. Usually, you know, well, I don't know what you have to split it, but it's fifty fifty. You know, sometimes yeah, or a different right, percentage. Right. So if half of your profit just goes out the door, and it's right. nice to have someone to talk to talk to, but yeah, I'm kind of a not. I don't I'm, marry specific deals. I'll have partners with, like you know, depending on what we're bringing to the table. But partners, I'm you know very leery of. What was the point, or what was the reasoning on the second home? You were in it for that much money. Um, I'm curious for the second or not the second home, but the one that we're talking about with the roof issue. Did you want to sell it because it had that roof issue and you didn't want like something coming back later, you know, problem to redevelop or you just wanted to get your money out or you didn't want to partner with that guy any longer? Any thought process when you uh, I think I think the biggest thing was <clears throat> me wanting like I was just I was, we were moving. Oh, right? that's so right. Was, that's huge. Within yeah. just a few weeks of us moving. Um, and so, you know, finding of the right buyer to stay in there. And then, right. you know, just, I think it was just best not to have to, you know, travel 2,500 miles in case they, you know, defaulted on their payments, you know, and yeah, it just, it's, it's just, it's just one less thing to worry about being such like a long distance. Okay. So, but you felt that and, and, and it's, it, you can't, we can't communicate that through video, but like you felt that feeling of like, I'm moving soon. I don't want this home. Or in I want this home, but like I just I have so much things, you know. You you were you were an emotional seller. You yeah. got to kind of be in the shoes of some of the people that we help. Yeah, no, that's that's the truth. You know I mean? That's exactly how it felt. That's okay. I mean, that's you know, that's just what happened. I mean, 
yeah, you know, it's crazy how much you can learn just from like one deal. You have to, you have to do the deal. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're not going to learn. I don't, like, I don't care how great the program is. You have to do them, right? Oh my, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how long did that take from start to finish? About two months. Yeah. Okay. Months. So not that, I mean, with the, so the contractor and everything, two months. Yep. Yep. All that. Okay. Yep. Wow. Not as long as I was thinking. Yeah. Um, and it seemed like longer when we were going through it. Yeah, it felt like a <laughs> Yeah, I bet. Thank you so much for being here. We went way over what I told you that this was going to be. So thank you so okay. much That's all right. for, yeah, for being here. So thank you so much again. Um, and I'll put some of those pictures up on this video. That'll be really cool. But thank you so much. It was so cool to meet you face to face finally and have this talk. And you know, my phone's always on for you. So we'll be talking. Yeah, no, thanks, John. I appreciate, well. I appreciate you always being there. You know, it would have been really hard without having you like as a direct line, you know, yes. answering questions. I mean, that's that made the big difference. It, I mean, oh my god! Well, I would have. You, you were the one to I mean make the name for yourself. You're the face of this business. You're the one, the glue keeping all this together. So I'm <laughs> happy to do that and moving forward. So and uh, I'll talk to you later. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Daniel. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you everyone for watching this video. And if you need to reach me, support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Talk to you soon.